Time now for Rocky Jordan. Not far from the mosque Sultan Hassan in Cairo stands the Cafe Tambourine run by Rocky Jordan. The Cafe Tambourine crowded with forgotten men alive with the babble of many languages. For this is Cairo, where modern adventure and intrigue unfold against a backdrop of antiquity. Tonight's story, Bakshish Boy. I guess it was along about five o'clock on a Sunday afternoon. Quite a bunch of river men had wandered up from the docks at Bulak and had kept the tambourine bar busier than usual. But finally, things got under control, so I left Chris alone at the bar and went to replenish our supply of bourbon from the cellar. I had just opened the cellar door when I heard a noise from below. I knew somebody was there ahead of me. I got down the steps just as a ragged little figure dodged back into the shadows and tried to disappear behind a barrel. Hey, come out of there. Hurry up, come out. What are you doing down here? What do you want? I want nothing. I, I am not steering. Please. Then what's the idea? Who are you? You do not remember me, Jordan Bay. I'm Misa. You gave me bakshish many times. Misa? You won't find bakshish down here. Oh, I do not ask for bakshish. How'd you get in here? The back door was not locked. Please, let me stay. Uh, nothing doing. I don't like beggar kids sneaking around my cafe. Now, go on, who's coot? No, no, please, Jordan Bay. Your Frankie would not send me out. What are you hiding from, Misa? What? It is just that I do not wish to beg anymore, Effendi. Then why come here? I wish to work for you, Effendi. Th that is why I came to the tambourine. You thought you'd find me in the cellar, huh? Please, I could do many things, and I would not be in the way. I could sleep down here. Uh, nothing doing, Misa. You sleep at home. Oh, no, no, I must not go back there. I would have to go on begging if I did. Uh, why not? You seem to get your share of piastres. But begging is not good, Effendi. I wish to work like other people. And someday, have a fine house on the Nile. You will let me stay? Uh, the tambourine is no place for a kid. Oh, but I could sweep and wash the dishes. I am not strong, but... No, I... not a chance. Now, come on upstairs. Jordan Bay, if I could just lie down here for a little while, I am tired. And yeah, that's not all. I think we'd better talk this over, Misa. But I told you I do not wish to be... I'd save it till I take the stuff upstairs. Effendi... You will tell no one that I am here? Yeah, no promises. I'll be right back. Please, Effendi, do not tell anyone I'm here. I beg you, Effendi. I never saw a kid so scared. You need more than ten fingers to count the kinds of trouble a bakshish boy can get into around Cairo. Well, I knocked around a certain waterfront back in the States when I was a kid, so I knew what Misa was up against. I set the bottles down under the bar and turned to go back when I saw someone moving toward me through the smoke haze of the cafe. I kept looking. Her close-fitting red dress was a perfect setting for her jet black hair and hat, black gloves and shoes. Only her purse didn't match. But the sound of her voice made me forget that. Rocky Jordan. You came to the right man, lady. I am Darlene Chambrun. Darlene Chambrun. Calcutta, Mr. Jordan. Oh, Calcutta. Well, let's have a drink to Calcutta, shall we? Thank you. And now. What'll it be? Please, let us not waste time. Well, uh, Oh, do not worry. I am not inclined to make trouble. Oh, neither am I, Miss Chambro. I will agree to a reasonable deal, if you will. Well, that all depends, don't you think? Look, I am the one to handle it, not you. Not if you are smart. Well, let's see if I'm smart, after I've heard the deal. Well, very well. We will split 70-30. I guess I don't have to ask who gets the 70. Naturally, I do. After all, I did all the work, didn't I? Uh, so far, you have. Miss Chambrun, suppose you uh, brief me a little. Just what's this all about? Mr. Jordan, I, I do not understand. <laughs> that goes double, lady. Please, there, there is no need to stall. You say a lot, Miss Chambrun, but it uh, doesn't mean anything. Wait, Mr. Jordan, you do know who I am. Sure. You're Darlene Chambrun of Calcutta. You have a deal. I, it is possible that there has been a mistake. I, I am sorry. Well, let's not let that stand between us. How about that drink, Miss Chambrun? We talk about something else. Uh, no, no. Kindly forget about it, Mr. Jordan. Forget everything. Well, sure. We all make mistakes. I am very sorry, Mr. Jordan. 
If you accept my apologies, I will be going. She didn't wait for an answer and floated toward the door. About halfway there, she hesitated, threw a quick look back at me, then she went out. But the perfume hung around for a while. I wondered how soon she'd be back. It was time I got rid of the beggar boy hiding in my cellar, so I started back through the office. And right then, I saw I'd forgotten to lock the back door to the alley again. Standing there, peering in, was a shabby native with sharp black eyes and dirty fingernails. One moment, Effendi. Uh, customer's entrance is out front. Wait. You must know that I would not enter your cafe, Mr. Jordan. I would have a word with you. Well, what about? It is about a beggar boy named Misa. Many times I have seen you talking with him on the streets. Oh, I know him. Effendi, he has been missing for many hours. I was told he was seen entering this door not long ago. Why are you so interested? I uh, I am his father. My name is Sinyak. So that's it. The Afranki will surely understand. I have been most worried. Never has Misa done this before. <laughs> you miss that bakshi she brings home, huh? There are many of us who are begging Cairo, Effendi. What else can we do? Okay, Sinyak, you can take him off my hands. Get him out of here, quick. Then Misa is here. Yeah, he's here, hiding in my basement. Come on. Uh, Allah will reward you, Effendi. Sure, sure. Come on out, Misa. Sinyak's here. Misa, where are you? Misa. Misa. He is not here, Jordan Bay. Looks like he skipped out. I can't say I'm sorry. You told me he was here. Where is he, Misa? Your guess is as good as mine. Oh, come on, no need to look around here any longer. Upstairs with you. Ah, now you know where Misa is, you tell me. Look, Senyak, I told you he's gone. I do not believe you. Hey, by the way, what was he hiding from? I do not know. You cannot keep him, Jordan Bay. You are safe. I will call the police. Go ahead, there's a payphone out front. Enough, I will give you a little time. You will see. Beat it, Senyak. Then perhaps when the Englishy feel this. Oh. 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 Pick up that knife and get out of here. Just to make sure, I looked for Misa a little more, but he was gone. I told myself good riddance, but it didn't work. His scared face stayed with me. Well, along in the evening, I finally decided to go out and scout around for my little beggar friend. Tharagit, the picture card salesman a couple of corners down, told me where Misa lived, in an infested alley off the Sharia El Nus. It was no place for an Inglesi to be after dark, especially with a knife-swinging rat like Sinyak shadowing along. But I found Misa's address. A sallow-faced girl answered my knock. Effendi? Why, I'd like to speak with the head of the house. Only I am here. There is no one else, Effendi. Oh. Well, I'm Rocky Jordan. Rocky Jordan. Misa has told me of you. You are his friend? That's right. Are you... Uh... I am Tarina, his sister. Please come inside quickly. Mr. Jordan, where is Misa? You must tell me. I was hoping you could tell me, Tarina. Misa has been gone for many hours. I fear he is in trouble. Why? The police were here. They are looking for him, too. I see. What about? I do not know. Oh, Mr. Jordan, Misa must beg. But he is good boy. He has been so afraid, but he would not tell me why. How does his father feel about it? Father, Effendi, we have no father or mother. Then who's Sinyak? Sinyak. He is Misa's employer. Employer? Sinyak has many Bakshish boys working for him. He tell them where to beg. They must turn over money to him. He let them have only small part. Oh, sweet little racket. But Effendi, I fear that recently he has forced the boys to do more than beg. Yeah. Mr. Jordan, you will find Misa for me. You will not let them harm him. Well, I'll, I'll do what I can, Tarina. Here, maybe you can use this. Oh, Mutashaki Effendi. I left Tarina there and got out of the native quarter fast. I halfway hoped Sinyak would make a play, but he didn't. It was after closing when I got back to the tambourine. I'd gotten out the key to open the front door when I saw that wasn't necessary. The lock had already been broken. I got inside and turned on the light. The place looked like a calm scene had swept through it. I hurried back to the office. That was even worse. The search had been complete, even to the safe which swung open. The sound of footsteps was from my room upstairs, so I went up two at a time. Inside, the light was on, and a flat-nosed man in a business suit stood waiting. 
before I could move again, my arms were pinned from behind. What do you want to move? Oh, did, I, did I keep you waiting? Not too long. You can save us any further search. For what? He doesn't know, Mado. Maybe I can help him remember. Well, give me your idea. We'll compare notes. Enough of these, Jordan. We don't want to hurt you. Maybe we do. The bigger boy came directly to the tambourine. He was seen. So don't deny it. Why should I? I thought you would be smart. Mesa's not here. We ain't looking for the kid no more. Look, you won't fool us, Jordan. Hey, wait a minute. Did you send that dame to the tambourine this afternoon? Maybe we did. I'll do the talking, Mado. Now, Jordan, turn it over and we'll get out. Turn what over? Oh. Where is it, Jordan? Ask Senyak. Kid took everything to him. We're going to get rough, boss. You just hold him, Mado. I'll handle the rest. <laughs> Won't I, Jordan? Sure. I'll handle this. I suddenly lurched forward and Mardo went right over my head. He landed on the guy with the flat nose and they both piled up. Mardo was a bum, but he was fast. He caught me before I reached the door. My fist slowed him up and his boss dived in from behind. Then they went to work on me. One went down, another came up in his place. Finally, I started going down. About then, we all threw away the rules. A chair caught the side of my head and bounced me against the floor. I was on my feet with my knees were jelly. This time, I didn't see him swing. You are listening to Bakshish Boy, tonight's adventure with Rocky Jordan. Here's a bulletin for mystery fans. The door creaks open tomorrow, Monday night at 9 for Inner Sanctum. And Tuesday night, Mr. and Mrs. North bring you another enjoyable clue and chuckle show at 8.30, followed by Inspector Hearthstone of the Death Squad at 9. Yes, and these are just a few of the fine mystery programs which will come to you next week over your local CBS station. So follow your papers and stand by CBS for mystery. And now we return you to Cairo and tonight's adventure with Rocky Jordan. A beggar boy named Misa picked the cellar of my tambourine to hide in. That's how it all began. He was scared, and I didn't have the heart to kick him out. A couple of minutes later, in came a dame who called herself Darlene Chambron. She had a deal, but she did a fade before she told me what it was. Next in line was a shabby native named Sinyak, who carried a knife he didn't use to clean his fingernails. He said he was Misa's father, so we went to get the boy. But Misa was gone, and Sinyak made a lot of threats. Later, I learned that Sinyak wasn't the boy's father. He was the head of a dirty begging syndicate Misa was working for. The last came a flat-nosed fellow and his muscle boy who tore up the tambourine looking for something. They ended up by slapping me around, and I went down for the count. I was just picking myself up when I saw Misa again, standing in the doorway and looking more scared than ever. What has happened, Effendi? Oh, Misa, where have you been? I was close by. You are hurt, Jordan. I, I will get water. Now you won't get anything, Misa. But, Effendi, you said that perhaps I could work for you. Uh, not in your life. You realize you dumped me right in the middle of this trouble? Oh, I, I am most sorry. Sure, sure you are. Look, a guy named Sinyak came looking for you. Where'd you go? When I saw Sinyak coming, I ran away. I do not wish to work for him. Some other fellows are looking for you, including the police. Suppose I just turn you over to them, huh? No, 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 do not do that. Now, why shouldn't I? Jordan Bay, I will tell you everything. Everything I know. Well, that's better. Yeah. All right, now, Misa, let's have it. Effendi, this man, Sinyak, had many boys who begged for him. But he has been making us do more than that. Like what? He taught us to steal things from tourists in a crowded bazaar. I thought so. Two days ago, I, I grabbed a purse from a beautiful lady and ran. She saw me, but I got away. It was not easy. What did you do with the purse? I took it to Sinyak. He kept only the money and told me to hide the purse. Since then, Effendi, many things have happened. Things I do not understand. Like what? Strange people are looking for me. Always they are following me. Two men were chasing me when I came here to hide. There was no place else to go. Go on. That, that is all I know. Just what did you do with that woman's purse? I hid it away with some other things. 
I'd like to see that purse, Misa. Come, Jordan Bay. I will take you to where it is. Misa and I went out the back way. We made sure we weren't being tailed, and I followed him through the dark, winding streets. We turned up an alley that seemed to be a hangout for half a million cats that infest Cairo at night. He opened the door to an abandoned shed. I kept my flashlight off so we got inside. This way, Jordan Bay. It is here somewhere. Misa lifted a board from the floor, and I played the light inside. If it hadn't been so serious, I'd have laughed. It was the usual pile of useless junk that any young boy treasures. Misa scratched around and pulled out a red purse from underneath. This is the one. Oh, here. Hold the light, Misa. Have a look. Yes, sir, Henry. Are you sure everything's here? Everything but the money, I'm sure. Mm, lipstick, compact, mirror, handkerchief. Nothing else but this envelope. Do you see anything? No. Uh, turn the light on this envelope. What does the writing say? Uh, Shepherd Hotel stationery. Addressed to Darlene Chambon. You know her, Fendi? Yeah. Darlene Chambon, 46 Rue de la Marcale, Paris, France. All stamped and ready to mail. Will you read the letter? I don't see why not. It isn't sealed. Hmm. There is no writing, Effendi. Oh, just a blank sheet of paper. But wh- why would one wish to mail a letter with no writing? Well, answer that one, Mesa, and you might explain a lot of things. Yeah, put the stuff back in the purse. I'm taking it with me. Yes, Effendi. But what shall I do? Nothing. Not till you hear from me. Just lay low and keep away from the tambourine. I had a hunch the self-addressed envelope held the answer. I sized up the three possible links. Darlene, the man with the flat nose, and Sinyak. If I knew people, Sinyak was the weakest link. Misa told me where Sinyak lived, and I went out hunting. I found his room up over a curio shop in the Khan El Khalil Bazaar. There was no answer to my knock, so I tried the door. It opened. I found the light switch and moved in. Well, the search was still on. The room had received the same treatment as my room at the tambourine an hour before. It was wrecked, drawers empty, clothes torn to bits. I stopped at the bed. Sinyak hadn't been treated as gently as I was. He was crumbled, and his face wasn't a pretty sight. That happens to a man when he's strangled. I still didn't know what Mesa had grabbed with the purse, but it wasn't peanuts. So after tipping off the police, I hung up quick. I wasn't ready to tell him any more. I caught a taxi and was off to see link number two at the Shepherd Hotel. Darlene Chambron was registered there, but she wasn't in her room, so I scouted the lobby and then the cocktail lounge. She was there, seated alone at a table. I invited myself over. Your order, madam? Bring me a ducky, we please. Uh, make it two, waiter. What? Mr. Jordan. Didn't expect me, darling? Well, I... Why did you come here? Oh, doing the town, you might say. I just dropped in on Sinyak. Sinyak? He didn't talk much. He was dead. I haven't the slightest idea what you're talking about. Who is this Sinyak? You don't know? I do not. Well, my mistake this time. Now we are even. Is that all? Well, not quite. I am still interested in that deal you came to the tambourine about this afternoon. I told you that was a mistake, so forget about it. Okay, we'll forget about it. Your drinks, monsieur and madame? No. Here, here you are. Thank you, monsieur. Well, darling, to Calcutta. To Calcutta. Say, I uh, like that red dress you're wearing. Well, you sound almost human for a change. What else do you like? Black hat, gloves. You know, there's just one thing lacking. Yes? A red patent leather purse. Zipper type. Mr. Jordan, you do have it. Yeah, including an envelope stamped and addressed to Darlene Chambron of Paris. But no writing inside. Where is it? It belongs to me, Mr. Jordan. I must have it. Then the deal's on again. Why did you not tell me this at the tambourine? I didn't have it then. Misa just gave it to me. Misa? The beggar boy. You mean the one who stole the purse from me in the bazaar? Uh Uh-huh. Ever since then, he's been running from you and a guy with a flat nose and Sinyak and the police and everyone else. Why? He's been robbing people. Come on, darling. Just what's so valuable about an envelope without a letter? That's my business. Now give it to me. Oh, I'm sorry. I left it in my other coat. Very well. Bring it to me and I will give you 100 pounds. Supposing I just take it to the police. 200 pounds, Rocky. On delivery? I'll have it for you. Well, I meet you. Meet me here, in the lobby, in front of the elevators. I'll be there. Give me an hour. I'll be waiting. 
Darlene stayed at her table, and I moved down into the lobby. I stopped by the desk and said hello to my friend Archie, the night clerk, who was sorting some hotel stationery. Then I moved out. It was getting late, and there wasn't a taxi at the door, so I walked on down along Ibrahim Pasha Square. The theaters were just letting out, and the sidewalks were crowded. All at once, I felt a violent tug at my sleeve. Boxy, Shabendi! Boxy! It was Misa, but he pretended not to recognize me, so I played along with him. Boxy, Shabendi! On your, your teeth! Talk fast, Misa. Where'd you come from? I've been watching you for Jordan. Two men are following you. One with a flat nose. Uh, look, want to help, Misa? Yes, Effendi. What shall I do? See those cops on the corner? Grab something. Make them chase you. Yes, but Effendi... Hurry, hurry. Lead them across the square to the front of the Cairo Bank. Are you game, Misa? I will do it for you, Jordan. Quick as you can. Imshi now. Yes, Effendi... I flipped him a piaster and he disappeared. I kept walking across the square down a side street. My two shadows were just a half block behind I let him get closer, and then I started running. So did they. I kept them moving around a couple of side streets, then up another alley. They decided the chase had gone far enough. A bullet combed my hair, and I stepped it up. They kept coming and fired. I reached the street, ducked around the corner in front of the Cairo Bank, and waited. I stuck my foot out at the right second, and the man with the flat nose hit the sidewalk. Right in front of Sergeant Greco and two burly Egyptian cops. Stop. All of you. Grab him, Greco. Hang on. Mr. Jordan, what is going on here? Oh, you see their guns? They were shooting at me. Pull them, Bullock. Take their guns. Now, Mr. Jordan, what is this all about? Oh, I'll explain everything to Sabaya. Just take them down. I don't need instructions. Come along with them. Bring the boy, too. Hey, wait a minute, Greco. Not the beggar kid. He didn't do anything. You are mistaken, Mr. Jordan. I saw him grab a man's wallet with my own eyes. This boy is coming to headquarters. You are listening to Bakshish Boy, tonight's adventure with Rocky Jordan. Street with No Name, starring Mark Stevens, Richard Woodmark, and Lloyd Nolan, will be presented by CBS Radio Theater Monday night at 6. This exciting story broke box office records when shown on the screen. So don't miss the radio adaptation tomorrow, Monday night at 6, over your local CBS station. And following Radio Theater, you'll want to stay tuned to CBS for My Friend Irma and another laugh-filled half hour with Irma, Jane Stacy, Professor Kropotkin, and, of course, Irma's boyfriend, Al. That's Monday night at 7. <laughs> And now we take you back to Cairo and Rocky Jordan for tonight's adventure, Bakshish Boy. I waited in front of the bank just long enough to see Sergeant Greco take my two followers and little Misa away. Then I got to a payphone and put in a call to Captain Sabaya, Cairo Police. Sabaya, speaking. Hello, Sam. This is Rocky. You, Jordan, unless you have a good reason for calling at this time of hey, night... Hey, listen. I... Sergeant Greco's on his way down there with a flat-nosed guy in his hood. And how how does this concern you? The two guys were shooting at me. Why? I don't know exactly. They wrecked my tambourine a couple hours ago, too. So? And why did you not report this wrecking of your cafe? Listen, Sam. Hold those guys. They may be tied up in the murder of Sinyak. So, Jordan, it was you who reported Sinyak's murder. Yeah, that's right, Sam. I should have known. You had a reason for not giving your name. Tell me what this is all about, Jordan. That's what I'm trying to find out. You are trying to find out. Are, are you not aware that there are police in Cairo for that purpose? Watch the blood pressure, Sam. I'll get down there as soon as I can. You will come down here at once. Oh, one more thing. Uh, do me a favor, will you? A favor? After the way you have cooperated? It's important, Sam. Greco's got a little beggar boy named Misa with him. Go easy on the kid till I get there, will you? And what will you be doing? I'll explain everything. So long, Sam. The one thing I didn't tell him was about my date with Darlene Chambron. I taxied back to the tambourine and got the envelope. It took me just a few minutes to get ready, and a quarter hour later, I was back in the lobby of the Shepherd Hotel. I was a little early, but Darlene was waiting right by the elevator. You are very prompt, Rocky. I'm never too busy. You brought the envelope? Yeah, it's right in my pocket. What about the money? May I see the envelope first? Sure. There you are, darling. This the one? Why, yes. Thank you, Rocky. What are you doing? Sealing it. And now... Hey, wait a minute. Now it is in the mailbox. 
You are too late, Rocky. Okay, do what you like with it. Let's get to the payoff. Sorry, the deal's off again. What? <laughs> you want the letter back? Try and get it. I'm afraid the postal authorities wouldn't like it. That's the way it is? That's the way it is. Don't be a poor loser, Lorky. <laughs> okay, darling. Looks like you outsmarted me. Things worked out my way. Yeah. Well, since the letter's gone, uh, suppose you let me do some guessing. Go right ahead. Since it was an ordinary envelope from the Shepherd Hotel, and there was nothing inside, there's only one place where anything of value could be hidden. Under the stamp. Keep going, Rocky. Another stamp, maybe. Post Office Mauritius, 1847. Worth at least $20,000. Misa did grab something hot, didn't he? Mm -hmm. Where'd you get it? Let's just say I picked it up in Calcutta. We needn't go into that. No, I can guess. Where does a man with a flat nose come in? His name is Hans Walden. He was going to help me to dispose of the stamp. And when Misa got it from you, Walden and his pal were helping you find it, right? Yes. It turned out I didn't need them. You need them less now. They got you into a nice little murder rap. It won't be hard to prove they killed Sinyak. Walden's smart enough to keep undercover. Uh, think again, lady. Walden's at headquarters talking to the police right now. Are you sure? Yeah. Suppose he tells him the whole story about that hot stamp. Supposing he does. Why do you think I carried it the way I did, ready to mail? If things got too hot, I planned to just drop it in the mailbox. No evidence. Like you just did? Certainly. The stamp is safe until I get to Paris. I doubt that anyone will follow me. Unless you'd like to, Rocky. Oh, that won't be necessary, darling. Why not? Your stamp isn't going to Paris. What do you mean? You didn't take a good look at that letter I gave you. It was a phony. I copped a Shepherd Hotel envelope from the desk when I went out. That's the one you mailed. I don't believe you. Well, maybe if I show you the real envelope, you'll change your mind. You're lying, Rocky. Here. Take a look at this. Rocky. There's something under this stamp. A post office, Mauritius, 1847. Fair game, darling. Give me that. Give me that. Keep shouting. You'll bring the house detective. What are you going to do with it, Rocky? Take it where it belongs, the Cairo police. Got an idea. Somebody back in Calcutta will be glad to hear about it. If not, you can pick it up at headquarters. But why? What good will it be to you? Nothing. But there's a boy named Mesa who needs a lot of help. I figure maybe Captain Sabai will return one favor with another. And, and what about me? Miss Chambro, I guess you'd be at least 26 years old. That means you've gotten along without my advice for 26 years. See no reason to change that now. <laughs> I turned and made for the door, but Darlene just stood there. Sam told me she was still there when his boys walked in a short time later. Well, Walden and his playmate are out of circulation for a long time. Oh, about Misa. Sophia got probation for him. My cafe was no place to have a young boy around, so we got him a job as a camel tender. So Misa's happy, and he won't be begging anymore. For me? Oh, I'm still at the tambourine. Only someday I'm going to learn to keep that back door locked. It's CBS again at this same time next week for another story of adventure and intrigue when we take you back to Cairo and the Cafe Tambourine run by Rocky Jordan. Jack Moyles plays the title role with tonight's story by Gomer Cool and Larry Roman. Rocky Jordan is produced and directed by Cliff Howell with original music by Milton Charles. Larry Thor speaking. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.